Hey everyone, this is Skeptic Talk, and I'm starting a new video series on some of the logical flaws and lack of evidence for the ideas presented by proponents of Young Earth Creationism. For those of you who aren't familiar with what Young Earth Creationism is, it's a popular form of intelligent design that holds that the Bible is the literal history book of the universe, and that the universe and the Earth are between 10,000 and 6,000 years old. As one can imagine, this puts proponents of young earth creationism into direct conflict with the majority of scientists and scientists in regards to how old the universe is, the age of the earth, and how life has evolved. So there are many videos on YouTube already dealing with the evidence for evolution, the evidence for the age of the earth, and related ideas which the majority of scientific evidence supports. My series, however, is going to deal with the flaws in young earth creationism itself without resorting to the evidence for evolution or the evidence for the Big Bang and so forth. In any case, I, I wanted to, before I start, give you a bit of context in regards to my background. I grew up in a fundamentalist Pentecostal household, and despite the fact that my parents totally encouraged my interest in paleontology, uh, they were always very critical and very cautious about a lot of the evolutionary ideas that were also being supported or advocated in a lot of the books and computer programs and TV shows that I was watching about paleontology. As a result, I was convinced from a very young age that the Bible story in Genesis was literally true and that evolution never happened. Even on the occasions where I had serious doubts about some of the things I was being told, I would eventually put the supremacy of Scripture above my skepticism. In other words, as the Bible teaches, I cast down everything that exalted itself above the knowledge of God or against the knowledge of God. For example, when I once uh, confronted a teacher at the Christian high school that I went to about the basic concept that the most distant stars that we could detect are billions of light years away and it would have taken billions of years for that light to reach Earth, I was basically told to see the Bible as the inerrant Word of God and that it's the supreme source of knowledge and that I should believe it even against science and empirical evidence that might contradict it. As a result, I embraced many of the ideas of young earth creationism during the early part of my high school uh, career. Uh, the high school that I went to, as I mentioned before, was a very conservative Christian high school and it was so it was so based on the idea of biblical inerrancy that they actually allowed me to do a history report, report on Noah's allegedly global flood as if it were a real historic event. And in retrospect, that seems kind of silly and it's kind of worrisome that people would actually believe it so much, but, you know, it's what it was. And I, I actually do have a lot of positive memories of high school, and I still hold that it was a good place to be even after deconverting. Uh, anyway, after a while, some of the flaws with the literal interpretation of Genesis that I had been fed for such a long time began to become apparent to me. Long before my deconversion, I had already found many of the ideas of young earth creationism to be flawed. Some of them involved scientific problems that were only revealed to me upon further research and study, and others were so simple that I should have just picked up on them immediately as a small child. Uh, this series will elaborate on some of those criticisms. Before I start, though, let me say this. One of the most prominent organizations promoting a literal view of the biblical creation account is the uh, organization Answers in Genesis, which is run by a guy named Ken Ham. They believe that without a solid foundation uh, of a literal book of Genesis and a literal creation account, other parts of the Christian faith begin, begin to become suspect. This is one of the few areas that I actually agree on them with. I, I actually do think that they have a valid point here. Without a historical Adam, without a historical Eve, without a historical talking snake, and without a historical tree of knowledge, uh, other concepts in the Christian faith are no longer valid. Without these elements in place, fundamental idea, the fundamental idea of original sin, basically so key to Christian theology, uh, loses its validity. It's undermined. Without original sin, the concept of man's total depravity and the need for Christ to die, as understood by most Christian fundamentalists, is also undermined. 
There, in my mind, is why Genesis matters so much to true believers and, as, and skeptics as well, because there's so much that actually rides on it. So anyway, that's, uh, that's my introduction, and I hope that you'll come back for more of the videos, and take care. So this is a Skeptic Talk, reminding you to answer the questions by questioning the answers, and I hope to see you soon.